Alright guys, how are you guys doing? Welcome to Apple Weekly 25, the show where I cover everything Apple over the past week and remember this is broadcasted on YouTube and iTunes. Before I start, I'd like to say a huge thanks to the sponsor for the show, Parcel Monkey as usual. Got tons of good Mac coverage this week so let's get started. First story is in relation to new Mac Pros possibly debuting this year sometime in the next few months. The Mac Pro over the past 7 or 8 years has remained the same essentially uh, design wise externally. Inside of course it's got speed bumps, processor changes, hard drive, graphics card but externally uh, it's still say, you know, remained the same 8 inches at the front, you know, still quite bulky. Apple is looking to kind of reduce the size and of course now that they've done away with the X-Serves which many businesses and high end professionals were annoyed with maybe they're trying to combine an x service slash Mac Pro-ish you know, machine into the one essentially by making it thin it would be kind of mountable or rackable uh, and of course that would be a great move the design is not going to be the only chain, you'll probably get speed bumps and so on inside but the other main addition will be of course Thunderbolt which debuted on the MacBook Pros this year. Intel has said they're going to pass the SDKs for Thunderbolt and this new technology onto third parties which is of course good because the MacBook Pros have got Thunderbolt for the past two months. The MacBook Pros are released end of February and we're coming up to the end of April and yet we've not seen any kind of Thunderbolt uh, device, third party device. Uh, that's two months into the life cycle. It's a bit of a shame there's no Thunderbolt devices, but then again, by the time it gets passed on to a developer to test it out and test the technology, and by the time it's going into production and onto the shelves, uh, it does take time, it's not instant. And of course, the way Apple works kind of secretive, you don't find it until we find it, or the general consumer finds out, it's a bit hard. So uh, look out for more Thunderbolt enabled devices uh, in the very near future. While talking about the possibility of Mac Pro refreshes, the iMac is going to see a refresh very soon. I did make a video separately on the iMac refreshes, if you click on the screen you can go directly to that video. Uh, but basically an update, I've found some more European resellers, Swedish and some French ones and some in Italy, who are reporting they've got no stock and they're going to get more stock on the 27th and that stock hopefully is going to be the new IMAX. While talking about refreshes, how can I not talk about iWork and MobileMe, which more rumours saying that you know it's going to get refreshed very soon. There's a promotion that runs out on April the 18th, or it has run out now, uh, and this is about the Rebit programme which Apple ran for iWork and MobileMe. So that's finished. Over the past few months there's been a lot of talk about the iTunes cloud and Apple's you know, reinventing or kind of redesigning Mobile Me, they made the Find My iPad and Find My iPhone and Find My iPod Touch kind of feature free. There's also been many hints and suggestions in the Mac App Store itself and Amazon bookstores where they've said iWork 11. Of course iWork hasn't been updated for the past year or year and a half, uh, so an update is very much due and Mobile Me, uh, the price it's price that, uh, I don't think it's really acceptable, £59, uh, I think it should be lower or even uh, much better free. And lastly, when on the, and lastly when on the matter of Mac refreshes, how can I forget about the good old MacBook Air which has been a saviour for me on my way to China, on my trip to China. The MacBook Air is going to get a refresh uh, in June according to Apple Insider, it's going to go into mass production, or the revised version is going to go into mass production next month, which is good. And specifically, they're going to put a Thunderbolt port in, so they're going to take the mini display out and put a Thunderbolt port in. And of course, that's not going to be the only thing they're going to do. They're probably going to put Sandy Bridge, most probably. Uh, they've also, what they've recently done is, if you just bought a new MacBook Air, you'd probably get a kind of a faster machine, a faster flash drive. So they've done away with the Toshiba ones that they were using before. Now they're using the Samsung ones, which have a read speed uh, of a bit more than what was found in the Toshiba ones. This one here, uh, purchased in October, so of course it has the Toshiba one. But if you've just bought one in the past few weeks, you might want to check uh, what kind of hard drive you have. Uh, and if you want to exchange it, you can if you bought it from an Apple retail or online store. So in general, my question to you is, what do you want from the next Macs uh, per se? What do you want in the Mac Pro? What are you looking to get a Mac Pro? Uh, in terms of the iMac, I've kind of already done a video on it and I said it earlier. What would you like on it? Uh, and the MacBook Airs, for me, what I'd like specifically in the MacBook Air is CPU, uh, Sandy Bridge has to be in there, Thunderbolt would, uh, not so much right now, I don't really mind because there's not enough devices or any devices for it just now, but I believe by the time it comes on the MacBook Airs in June, July-ish, uh, there will be a, a few kind of Thunderbolt enabled uh, devices kicking around. So the next topic is on the iPhone and some of you are going to be like, thank god he's moving away from Mac stories. Uh, the iPhone kind of gets a refresh or has in the past got a refresh every June, July time. That's when WWDC is but there's been a lot of 
speculation as to what's going to happen this year. Now, before any device, whether it be an iMac, whether it be an iPhone, iPad, iPod, Apple has to give the suppliers advance notice, it makes sense, so they can get the necessary workforce, supplies, the teams, and the, you know, a full plan, a schedule as to you know what's going to go down. Uh, and these suppliers have supposedly not received any word from Apple in relation to the iPhone, the next revi revision of the iPhone, which is worrying because if, you know, by going by previous times, if that's not happened yet, then we're not going to see an iPhone in WWDC in June. There's been a lot of speculation that the date is pushed forward to uh, September. Of course, the September time frame is in line with when the iPod touches get refreshed. So are we going to see an iPhone being refreshed at the same event? Possibly. 9to5Mac also reports that Apple has handed out some new iPhones, uh, codenamed 4S, uh, to selected developers. And these iPhones, in specific the 4S, has an A5 chip which is found on the iPad, which is of course a dual core chip, more faster, and the purpose of supplying these to developers is so they can test their games out for when the next generation of iPhone comes out. Again, uh, this it could just be an iPhone 3G body, and inside it the internals could just be totally top notch. Uh, again, Apple produces a number of prototypes and you know not all of them or none of them can actually get accepted. It's basically just for developers to kind of check out, you know, fiddle around, see how the app works, and then by the time the, the next version of iPhone launches, everything is in place for the end consumer. Could this be the next generation iPhone 5? Doesn't it look sweet? Now this is one of the many devices in circulation at Apple HQ or Apple Cupertino. As with any gadget, you know, there's many prototypes. Some of them don't get accepted. Some of them just get scrapped together and then one finally shines. Now this is one of the many prototypes in circulation and this is my next. Uh, the blog uh, got a hold of a picture uh, and they've posted a full detail on it. It could be said that it's very similar to the MacBook Air and in that you know it's thick and it goes all the way to thin, it's completely redesigned. The back is very similar to the iPod Touch. The screen is a 3.7 inch screen, of course the current generation ones are 3.5 inches. The gesture button uh, or the home button on this is bigger, easier for gestures. Again just to reiterate this is one of the many devices in testing this could get accepted or couldn't but nevertheless it looks pretty slick. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. But forget about the next generation iPhone because there's a white iPhone 4 being released next week. As you can see from this image, a Netherlands retailer or reseller is showing that they're getting stock in next week of 16 GB white iPhone 4s. This is an internal memo being leaked uh, and it's been passed on to 9 to 5 Mac. So my thinking is if Apple is releasing a white iPhone two months prior to WWDC, yeah, uh, an iPhone 5 is not likely at WWDC more likely or most likely in September. And last but not least, Apple has sued Samsung, for those of you who haven't heard. I'm personally not a huge law or a copyright professional, uh, but these pictures kind of explain for themselves what Apple is talking about. These pictures do look pretty exact, and if you were to walk into a shop and pick one of these up, you wouldn't know which one was kind of the real thing or the fake one. Here are two pictures of two mobile phone devices look pretty identical shape wise, design wise and app icons look pretty much identical but then again uh, you know Apple is being sued by so many, Apple is suing so many uh, the technology or the business is pretty much if you look at the company and brands they're all suing each other and these cases do last for years they go on for you know years and years uh, when courts take them backfire and so on there's been areas where apple have been stepping over the line there's been areas where others have been stepping over the line and it's also important to know apple have only kind of sued one division of the entire samsung brand they haven't sued the entire company in essence you know samsung is the biggest supplier for iphones you know samsung been builds uh, iPhones and it's worth 5.3 billion US dollars, the iPhone in itself. So if Samsung was to lose that contract, they would pretty much be busted. Uh, so, you know, they have to be very careful and Apple is not sued the entire thing, just the one division that is making these phones identical to what iPhones are and someone's pressing the horn outside. But as of today, Samsung have counter sued Apple and said, hey, you have stepped over the line as well and here are the 10 things. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting next few weeks, months and years and see how this actually pans out. But guys, that's it for this Apple Weekly. Hope you guys liked it. If you can put a comment below, that would be pretty goddamn awesome. If you can rate this video if you're on iTunes, if you can rate the podcast, that would be great. Put your views in the comments below or a video response, that would be great. Remember, you can join me on iGlassWeeding.com, Twitter.com slash i6GlassWeeding, Facebook.com slash iGlassWeeding. Once again, huge thanks to the sponsor, Barcelona Monkey, and I'll see you next week, guys. Cheers. We have a new sponsor here at iGlassWeeding, looking to send a package at the lowest price possible. 
Simple. Visit parcelmonkey.co.uk, follow these four simple steps, have the package collected from your doorstep, and then sit back and relax.